Hi, this is Michael with Ward's Auctions, and this is the tutorial video for new bidders registering with iCollector for our online auctions. Uh, the point of this video is to explain to some of the new people or people who have been a little bit nervous about how to register or how the online system works, uh, and to answer some questions that even uh, people who have bid with us for a long time uh, may have may need answering. Uh, I answer a lot of questions repeatedly, uh, and hopefully this will clear it up for some people. So we're going to start right at the beginning. This is how to register for the sale. So first go to warsauctions.com and obviously this is our web space and you're probably watching this on our web space as it is but if you happen to have come across this on YouTube there is a link in the description. So from our, our main page go to the auctions link, it's the second button. Now this is all of our auctions. Now everything below the black line is completed sales, says sales complete and uh, from there you can see every sale that we've done oops, every sale that we've done in the past uh, to 2011 but for now we'll ignore that go to our current sale and for every sale that is currently on iCollector you will see this green button very hard to miss I made it bright green let's click on that and this is going to go now to iCollector now I've created a demo sale uh, this is for for the tutorial. Uh, you can see our current sale. I'm recording this just after I created the May 10th sale of 2015. But for now, we're just going to deal with the demo sale. So I do not have. Uh, I'm not registered. I should say on iCollector. I have an account as it is. So I'm going to hit get approved to bid. Now from this screen, you can either create new account that's down here, or if you already have an account, you can log in and I do have one, it's Wards Auctions and I'll put in my password if I can remember it and now this is going to verify the information that I have now if you haven't created an account it's going to ask for the exact same information this is just verifying that it is accurate please if you're registering make sure that your shipping information is accurate because every time somebody registers with incorrect shipping information and it's very hard to get the items to you and you have to pay twice if you make a mistake on your shipping address and I ship it somewhere that doesn't exist and it comes back you have to pay a second time so please keep that in mind so uh, the information that you have in here is actually the auction house so it's 11802 and 145th Street in Edmonton uh, and this is Brad's cell phone number. That's 9408378. So if you have any questions, feel free to call that number. Call me in the office at 780-451-4549. So I'm going to add my credit card information and uh, get to the next step so that we can see uh, how to continue from there. Okay, as you can see, I am now approved for the sale. Now this sale is not scheduled for another two days. Uh, I did that just to show you what it is like a week or two weeks before the sale even begins because uh, you can leave pre-bids. So click on the auction details here. And this here is the uh, listing. So I created three items in the sale. Our average sale is about 800 items so naturally this is just uh, uh, to show you an example. Uh, always goes in order one, two, and three and you can see here at the side right here there's a current item with twenty dollar bid on it uh, and that is me I have another account I've created a different bid these these items have no bids every item starts at twenty dollars so uh, we're gonna go ahead and place a bid on the clock which has no bids now twenty dollars is the minimum bid but it is not you can put in uh, any number that you're you're willing to go up to. So if I'm say willing to go up to $100 on here and place this max bid and I will confirm this and you can do this for every item in the sale uh, there is no actual limit to this to how many items you have a pre-bid on. Now the current item bid is $20. You can see that here. So it will bid for me uh, if you've ever used eBay or proxy bid uh, it's going to bid on my behalf up to $100. And I'm going to show you what that looks like during the live sale uh, a little further on in this video. So let's go back to the item. And you can see uh, if I want to increase my bid, uh, this is my current bid. Anyone else that comes in is going to see the $20 bid, but they're not going to see that I bid up to $100 already. They're going to only see $20. If they put a $40 bid in, it's going to increase it up to well the next bit so here I'll show you an example of that by going to um, 
back to all the items. This item here has a $20 bid. Now between you and me, I happen to know it's a $50 bid is the maximum, but it doesn't tell me on there. The only person who knows that is the person who left the bid, the auctioneer, uh, myself in the office. We do not get that information. iCollector does not share that with us. Uh, it's a privacy thing, and it's um, it's good, you know, for the auctioneer to not know. Uh, it's information we don't need, and uh, it's really just personal to the person who left the bid. So if I leave a $30 bid, it's going to now, yeah, confirm my bid at $30. Okay, I had my bid at $30. I've been outbid. You can see that up here because there is a higher bid than that. So if we go back to our catalog listing, the current bid now is $40. So I bid it up, but I'm still not the current bidder. So if that doesn't make any sense, you know, call Michael in the office, but that I, I think most people should be able to understand what just happened. And I think we'll leave this one clear, and I will show you now uh, what it looks like for a current auction. Actually, no, I'm going to show you something that most people do not or are not aware of. Even people who have bid with us for a very long time is the Your Account button. It's up here in the top bar, Your Account. Very important. It's all your information as well as your items. So this is an item I am currently winning at $20. Uh, I get calls every day. People are saying, uh, I cannot tell what items I've won, what items I'm currently bidding on, uh, where I'm the current high bidder. And it's right here. It's in the middle of the top page. It's called Your Account. You cannot miss it. Uh, so please uh, check that out. If you have any problems or if something is missing from there, then you can call me. You can call iCollector. Um, they have much more control over the system than I do. So keep that in mind as well. We do not run iCollector. We hire them. So I will do what I can on my end, but it is up to them to fix um, glitches and the like. Not that you'll find very many of them. And these are items I'm losing. So I did have a bid on here, but I was outbid. This is one that I'm winning, and uh, this is items that I've won. And this was from a, another test sale that I did, just to show you that how this works. I'm back now on the awardsauctions.com website, just to show you. Say it's auction day now. It's time for you to actually. Uh, live bid if you haven't set up your pre-bids or even if you did set up your pre-bid don't worry you cannot bid against yourself so we're going to start exactly the same way go to auctions go to online bidding now the big difference that you're going to see here is the live bidding button now and it's orange when you go over it, it used to flash I guess it doesn't anymore not that it's necessary and uh, you're going to click on that now I'm already logged in if you're not logged in you can still either sign up to register or you can log in with your Facebook or Gmail account. Uh, now if you are registering for the sale with your Facebook or your Gmail account, make sure that the information is updated. A lot of people have joke names on Facebook. I am not going to approve you if you keep your joke name. Uh, you know, I had a guy called The Professor. He did not get approved. Very angry. And I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. I don't know who you are. Uh, so make sure that you are updating the information if you do it. But if you just want to watch the sale, uh, Gmail, uh, sorry, your Google Plus account or your Facebook account, click on that button and you'll get the same thing. Now, you can either watch here, and that's where you're not even bidding, you're not, you don't have to wait to be approved to bid. And, and a lot of people like to do that, especially if they have absentees, uh, paper absentees in the building. They, they can watch, or if they're waiting for a particular item, they can see how fast we're moving. For now, let's move to live auction. give that a second to load here. Now this will run on just about every browser. It's uh, HTML5 based, which is very exciting. That means it'll run on mobile phones, uh, your iPad, your iPhone, uh, just about any mobile product really. And uh, it's very exciting. It's very easy to use. Uh, no software is needed as long as your web browser is up to date. And pretty much if you've updated in the last year, it will run. So this is the first item that we see here. This is exactly the bidding screen you can see in the top corner. It's got uh, live video feed, I should say, of the auction. It, right now it's just a messy auction house, but normally you would see the auctioneer standing up here and you'd also be able to hear him. If you are bidding, do not bid by the audio. Uh, the bidding interface here, leaving a $20 bid here, is very fast. It's very up to date, but the audio feed, because it's way more information and it is not HTML5, uh, I won't get into the technicals of it, but it will leg 
Uh, the longer it runs, it can be, you know, 10 seconds to 5 minutes of lag. Uh, also, to catch it up, just as a tip, you can pause the video. If there is a bit of a lag, pause the video, wait a second, unpause it, and it will then refresh uh, to get less of a lag. So if you run it for an hour or so, you'll notice that it will lag quite a bit behind. Okay, let's continue on here. So I've just created a $20 bid. So on my other screen, on my live screen, I'm going to accept it. And now it says that I am the highest bid. Uh, now if you see on there, Ward's Auctions, this is only, only I can see that as the active bidder. Anyone else, they only see this the word internet and my bid number. Uh, so if you don't see your own name, if you only see a number, that means you are not the current high bidder. And the bid number is randomly generated uh, it's generated based on the number in which you registered on for the sale as well as your location now if the auctioneer is is actually selling he'll be going very fast he'll be going 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 and you'll see it's going to go up very fast with the floor button now if it is going up really fast and I put my bid in there the clerk has to still accept it so even though I clicked the bid at $110 and $120, it did not accept it. And I'll do it in slow motion here. If he's going, asking for $140 and I bid $140, but somebody on the floor has already put their hand up at $140, I did not get it. Okay, so that's very important. And it is the first person to click the button. If it does go to an online bid, so a lot of people say, you know, my bids are not getting through, they're not being accepted. If it went gray, that means that your bid did go through. But the sale is moving too fast for the sale for the auctioneer or the clerk to even accept that bid. That or someone else online has a faster button, that, uh, finger, trigger finger than you. So as the the sale starts to slow down, you know the bidding, uh, you know he's starting to beg for bids, and you click it, he will obviously accept your bid. You know he does. It, it's just like anyone else in the room. He gives you time to think about it uh, when it slows down. Once it starts hitting those higher numbers. So, you know, make sure that you get your bid in, and uh, once it's accepted it, so it's sold for $160, it does say my name, my, this, Ward's Auction is my login name for iCollector. Okay, item two, the chair, you're going to remember that I had an account that has a $50 bid on it, and we upped the bid, we added $30, it went to my first bid at $40 very hard to explain but basically the current bid is forty dollars so when the bidding starts it's always going to start at the twenty dollars but you're going to find that the clerk right away is going to get a notice on her screen or his screen that they have uh, a current bid of forty dollars so i'm going to go ahead and accept that now here's an interesting situation i'm going to bid fifty dollars on this screen and if i if that gets accepted i bid the fifty dollars but now you'll see it says that sorry it says I had the $50 and now it says internet 101 or 1001 has the $50 so what had happened there this is a system that's built into iCollector is if an online bidder reaches the somebody's maximum bid maximum proxy bid which in this case is $50 that proxy bid will overwrite any other bid and become the current high bid so I may believe that I'm on at $50, but I'm not. And a, a big key thing about that is that the word internet is not or is listed, not my name, and I can continue to bid. If it's gray, I'm the high bidder. If it is green, that means I'm not the high bidder and I am not currently on. So it's very important. A lot of people call me about this. Uh, they say the system's broken, the their bids are getting rejected. It is something that's built into iCollector. They are not going to take it out. I've talked to them. Uh, and it only happens if somebody hits their maximum bid. So I have to bid $60. So even though I bid 50 I also bid 60 Please just, that's the way it works. It's the way iCollector set it up. It is not something that can be changed. I'm hoping one day in the future they are going to make it much more obvious that you are not the current bidder. It'll say something like, your bid has been... Uh, already done I don't know something like that so very important for me to get the current bid I had to bid sixty dollars which I just sold now instead so just it's you really need to keep that in mind um, I'm really trying to drive home that is not something that 
can be fixed. It's not something that can be turned off. It is built into the system. It's something that a collector really mm-hmm. wanted in there. Put it in three years ago, and uh, lately it's just been happening a lot. It only happens if someone hits a max bid, so it should be rare, but lately it's been happening a lot. So just something to keep in mind. Now I'm going to show you something that most people have actually not seen. This is the clerking screen. Uh, it's not something that anyone would ever need to see unless they're literally clerking the auction. The clerk sits beside the auctioneer during the sale. Uh, I'm showing this to actually sh- show a couple things that a lot of people don't understand or may be confused about. So as the bidding starts, you know he's going to go very quickly. He's going to say, um, uh, you know, can we start the bidding $100? If there's no bid, let's start the bidding at $50, and uh, we'll click it up. And now we're starting at $50. If somebody already had a bid of $20. It doesn't matter. We're not starting that low. Uh, in this case, you know, somebody on the floor has already put their hand up at fifty dollars, so that's where we're starting. So, there, the clerk does not see bids lower than what they're currently asking for. So it's going to go up, you know, um, seventy, eighty, a hundred dollars as people on the floor are bidding. So now somebody online is actually bid. So obviously, I can reject or I can accept it, and in almost every case, I would accept it. That is the entire system. I don't know how high this person wants to go. A lot of people say, you know, I would have gone another another bid. How come you didn't just add it? Uh, those kinds of things. It's not something that we can control. Uh, even if you had a proxy bid in there, I don't know how high you want to go. So, uh, again, I, it's not something that is even feasible for me to try to control. So uh, that's all the system is. And then we hit floor, we accept, and now it is sold to the floor, and that is it. Uh, so a lot of people who who may believe that we can see a lot more information, uh, it's just really not the case. It's a very quick system, and it moves very quickly. So I'm going to unsell it and uh, give you an idea of what an item usually goes for. Let's say we're selling this car, and we'll start it at I'll start at 100 bucks. It's a good deal for a car. He's going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and he's going to go very quickly. And uh, even if he jumps the bid up then uh, to fifty dollars and then we have to do that and with the people bidding online if they're moving really fast and there's people bidding online there's just not enough time to accept it there's no point in accepting it because we're only going to skip past you if if it is it is actually moving that fast so by the time we've accepted your bid if we've already accepted five bids there's just no point in it eventually when he starts slowing down you know I, I'm we're at 9.30, I'm asking for 9.80, so many bids on it, and it's only the first, the quickest person to press it online is the current bid. Okay, once this one here, it has not been accepted, but it is locked in, nobody else can bid on that number. They're, they can hit the button, it'll go gray for them, but we're not going to see it. So it's just, that's how the system works, so uh, just keep that in mind while you're bidding. You know, I'm not even sure if I'm really supposed to show this clicking system, but it, I think it'll help to answer a lot of questions that people have. Uh, the last thing we're going to show you is a little bit of information for registering for a firearm sale. So if you've registered for a firearm sale, you'll see it's exactly the same as far as the iCollector system goes. You're, you're going to ask for the same information uh, with the exception of driver's license. That's the only time we'll ask for a driver's license with iCollector. Unfortunately though, we need so much more information uh, assuming that you're going to buy a firearm. Even if you're not going to buy a firearm, we still take all this information. Uh, fact is, if you say that you're only going to bid on a chair, you know, we happen to have a chair and a firearm sale, once you're approved, there's nothing to stop you from from bidding on a firearm. Uh, you cannot take possession of it, obviously. You would still have to pay for it, but I don't want my vault uh, filled up with items that uh, people have cannot own. You know, They may own it, but it's now locked in my vault. It's just not something I want, so you do have to fill this out. So what will happen is you'll get an email with a link to this website. If you do not fill this out, you will not be approved. Uh, with firearm sales, you cannot be approved the day of the sale. It just takes too long to compare the information in both iCollector and this form. It all gets emailed to me. It's a very secure system. A lot of people are concerned, though. Uh, you can actually do a fax and email copy. That's one that you print. And you can either scan it and email it to me, or fax numbers on the top of the page. Um, however you want to do it, really. But I recommend just filling out this. It doesn't ask for anything terribly personal. Uh, your PAL is actually public information, that number on the top. Uh, as far as I am understand, it's what I've been told. Uh, everything else is your email address, your telephone number. Uh, 
your address, everything else, your credit card information, I collector already accepted that or already collected that. I do not need it again. So fill out this form and for American bidders, you do have to answer all these yes and no questions. Basically, Americans cannot have anything. Uh, it take, costs about $500 to ship any gun. It doesn't matter um, what kind of gun it is. It's $500 just to ship it from one country to another. Uh, what with the Forum 6, the couriers, you need Canadian couriers, American couriers, uh, brokers, I should say. And it's just, it's, it's very expensive. So we don't have a broker as it is in Canada. Uh, it's very hard to find one that's very trustworthy and one that we want to work with, uh, you know, in a certain volume. So if you are an American and you want to bid with us and you have a Canadian broker, uh, make sure that you've registered at least two weeks before the sale. Uh, I would even recommend calling me well in advance, uh, even earlier than that if you can help it. But generally, it will not be on iCollector that early. So definitely, it's not something I recommend if you are an American, uh, just for those guns and any animal products, and we are not going to ship Nazi items. A lot of people say, you know, why won't you ship Nazi items? It's legal to ship Nazi items. It's a, it's a gray area. There are places you can ship it, places that I cannot ship it, and I'm tired of having to look up those those laws. So for now, no item, no animal items or Nazi items are going to be shipped out of the country, out of Canada. Anyway, Fill out all this information, get it all accurate. If it's inaccurate, especially if we're getting close to auction day, I am not going to email you back and tell you you did it wrong. Uh, fact is, you know, you've had all the time in the world to get it right. And uh, if you don't know your own information, uh, I certainly can't assume that you're going to get it right the second time if you couldn't get it right the first time. And something to keep in mind also, and this is very important here, is that if you buy a restricted firearm, and I can and I have to ship it to you you don't live uh, anywhere near us that is totally fine except for I cannot ship a gun until I have legal confirmation that the firearm has been transferred into your name and now this is a catch-22 because in Canada you are allowed to keep that information private so you can say I do not want them to have permission or have confirmation of the transfer which is totally fine but I am not allowed to ship it to you without that so if you happen to deny it, uh, I did add add six weeks for shipment as other proof is requ as acquired. Uh, six actually may be a bit of a pipe dream. Uh, it's closer to two months now. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, if you happen to call the CFO to confirm the transfer and they ask you how you want us to be notified, uh, do not tell them that you don't want it to be notified if you want the gun in a timely manner. Otherwise, uh, tell them that you want to keep that private and in two to three months you will get your firearm and uh, the shipping is is locked in stone it may change from sale to sale depending on what the items are it's non-negotiable uh, it's a big part of it is the time it takes to pack a firearm as well as the paperwork involved uh, there's just a lot of man hours and we cannot do that for free so that's why it's non-negotiable everything else that's not a firearm is through Canada Post for quotes we charge $20 an hour to, sorry, $25, and again, that may change for shipping per hour. Most items do not take an hour to ship. Plus, you pay for the packing materials and whatever Canada Post charges for the shipment. So we do not make a profit on that. Everything is just to cover the labor and the materials and uh, get the items to you, the shipping cost.